things in real life are like this. So I now use yeah. I now use that to get into the lesson and that captivates their attention and they follow up the lesson without disturbing the in class because it's really they are questioning themselves, so they need an answer. Oh, so okay. at the end, they are instead following up the lesson. Okay, that's good. Which means that the the tip that you use is to form a good lessons. Is le once you plan the lesson well, in the course of the lesson, there will be no distraction and the class will be well managed, right? Yes. Okay, okay. Thanks so much. And I hope that is what some other people are using. So uh, Madam Nana is just joining us. I don't know if she can share to us some of the normal common tips she used in order for her class to be orderly or for her class to students not to disturb in class. What are some of the tips? Madam Nana, you can unmute yourself and talk. Madam Nana, please unmute yourself. Yes. I don't know. Did you get the question? No, sir. I have a little problem with the, the audio. I don't know if it's. No, but I'm getting you. We're phone. getting you five on five, which means that you don't have problems with the audio again. You can talk. Ah, okay. Did you hear the question? No, sir. The question is that, you know, here, the document we shared was on classroom management tips, practices, and routine, which is what we do in our classes, the innovations that we are going to learn. But before we learn that, there are some traditional ways in which we manage our classes to make sure that there is order. So what are some of the tips that you use in your class? Okay, so uh, uh, my own tips uh, usually pass according to the class. When I'm in uh, junior classes, it is much easier because when they just see a child entering class, automatically they will remain quiet. But when they start making noise, I have some, let's say, small stories to distract them or sometimes small punishment or some small basic things. Wow. So uh, thank you so much, which means that you, uh, we are getting punishment. And most of us, almost every teacher do use punishment, right? We all use punishment, as I can even say. Now, uh, in the presentation, I will still share my screen and I will go through the presentation. From what we have discussed, we are going to see what we have been using, and then we look at what Peace Corp is present, proposing to us or suggesting to us as innovations that can help us to be able, able to better practice in our classes and help uh, handle classes with ease. So manage, because we know that an effective management in class or when a class is effectively managed then performance is guaranteed so we are going to go into the small presentation i have met taking out elements from the document that we shared and to do that i'm going to share my screen so i'm still sharing my screen as we did the first time So can you all see my screen? Hello. Yes, can you all see my screen? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, nice picture. You also yes. saw the picture like me. Uh, I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Please. We are looking at the classroom. This mathematics teacher, GBHS Baturi. Uh, and a digital uh, teacher master trainer. So for us to be fast so that we should not lose uh, whole of the network again, I will just be a little faster.
So everybody is seeing the PowerPoint presentation, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I will just move on. It is, I will go to the second slide, objectives. We are demonstrating classroom routines, practices, and activities that result in engaging focus and well-ordered classes. For we know that when a class is well-ordered and then with good engaging practices, learning will really be effective and good. So as a motivation, you have just known some of the traditional or common tips that we usually practice effectively manage our classrooms and uh, please madam nana can we listen and stop distracting oh, sorry sir. can i continue yes sir okay now some of the traditional classroom management tips include if you look at there is a picture here this picture is written the classroom management. There's a teacher standing on the board and then a few students. In a few class like this one, it's very easy to manage. But what happens when the class is big, when the class size is in such a way that we, 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 we cannot even imagine four in a bench, five in a bench, like some classes we encounter here. So we're saying that some of the traditional practices are scolding. Most of times we think that to better, better manage a class, we need to beat the children scold the insult. Secondly, punishment, like we discussed. You have other methods like classroom arrangement, the way you make their sitting positions. So those are some of the tips that we have been using. Working with only few comprehensive students. So in our class, we think that once we talk to those who are fast learners and then they understand, we just move on, our lesson continue. And at the end of the day, we have done our teaching. So another one is rule play, getting all involved, like what Madame Pamela said. So when you prepare a good lesson at the beginning of the class, you have made sure that everybody will be involved in the lesson when you were preparing the lesson. You can do a rule play, and that rule play will captivate the attention of the students and the class will go on effectively. So these are what we call the traditional classroom management tips that we know. Okay, now, some innovations for well-ordered classes. After those traditional classroom uh, methods that we know, there are some innovations. Looking at these pictures, the pictures you see in your screen, you have in, on the first picture, you see it is like a round table conference where students sit and they discuss. Each of them, as you see the four of them sitting, is actively engaging. So this is what we call a teamwork. And you can call the four of them a group. Looking at the second picture, you see they are sitting. Now, it's like there is a leader who is having a reader, then trying to identify some aspects of learning where the other ones are actively trying to follow up and then inquisitive to even get what the other one is saying. The third picture here, you have, there are three of them, and then one is showing, illustrating. So teaching by illustration and trying to make sure that others see the, the captivating aspect of what he or she is trying to do. And in the fifth picture, you see total group work. Now, there are four of them, but each of them is working in pair, pair-wise. So which means that what this one knows shares the idea with the other person. What this one knows shares the idea with the other and vice versa. So in the innovative aspect of classroom management, the key is that the class should be managed in group or in pairs. So the power of group or teamwork in effective classroom management. These illustrations are just for that. Now, going to the aspects of listing, the some innovation. The first is what we call idea waves. In idea waves, it is a new innovation, which means that we are creating lesson vocabulary and asking learners to construct sentences based on the given vocabulary. When you are teaching a lesson and then there are some words that 
Students have not been current with those words. You create a vocabulary for those words. And in the course of the lesson, you can be using those words frequently and asking even students to make some sentences in any subject. So that is what we call idea waves. All students, before they leave the class that day, they will master what those new words are. And tomorrow, they will not be new to them. So we have what we call exit tickets. Exit tickets is also an innovation, which is questions prepared for learners to answer before a teacher ends a lesson. So these exit tickets, you have planned a lesson. You know that at the end of the lesson, you expect the students to have learned this. You already prepare some short questions. And once you have finished your lesson, before you leave the class, you share it to students and ask each of them to answer, read and answer the question. So that way you can evaluate. It is some sort of a, a formative evaluation. Now we have what we call correction sheets. Correction sheets is you can make a record of errors made by students on tenses or punctuation marks and provide solution. This uh, record of errors, errors in maybe students trying to answer questions in your class, they are not perfect. There are some grammatical errors that they will make. Each grammatical error a student make, you, you write it down on a sheet and that sheet you have prepared it called correction sheet. At one moment along your lesson, you can have a break and then you make those corrections. We also have what we call, you provide enough wait time for learners during lesson. So there is something uh, which come with this and then it is here called think aloud. So when you ask a question in class, as an innovation to the classroom management teams, you need to give your learner some small few seconds. That is called wait time. That few seconds is the time for the child to brainstorm, to have a re-understanding of the question you have asked before that child starts giving an attempt. Without this time, asking a question and just trying to get the answer directly can be misleading. So as a conclusion, we know that discipline is a small aspect of classroom management. And uh, for good classroom management, we know that good classroom management is incorporated in good lesson planning, still going to what Pamela was discussing about. Once a lesson is good, well prepared, and that lesson is student centered, and creating teachers' community of practice. So, which means that if a lesson is well prepared as an innovation to end, to bring a conclusion here, if a lesson is well prepared that touches students' active participation in the lesson, and uh, the teacher has the ability to interact with teachers as we are doing now, to share our ideas, to share uh, the methods that we use with each other so that we can learn from each other, you see that we will not have much work to manage our classes. Managing our classes will just be a very small aspect to do. So this was just a small presentation Thank you for your participation. So I think this small presentation was just for us to see how the document we send is very rich. And the Peace Corps, they are encouraging us to help us to be able to handle our classrooms with ease. We know that sometimes we do fail and then we insult our students and even accuse them. Whereas the problem is not even at times them, but it is the way we go about handling our classes. So please, I think uh, now, though we are very few of us present in this meeting, that is just the first thing that I prepared and I wanted us to share. So thank you for listening once more. Is it me?
Okay, thank you for sharing, sir. Okay. So I don't know if there is any question. Because this is just an aspect from the document, the soft uh, copy document that I shared on WhatsApp. So when you go through that document, you learn a lot. So what I have just given here has been selected for me and it's just a small aspect of that selection. So there is a lot of uh, material there that is really rich and can help us a lot in our assignment of teaching. So I have a question. Yes, Pamela. In case you are in the second cycle and that the student don't have a respect for their teacher, yes. that is why I the class go off. Students are there disturbing anyhow when you're talking, they don't want to listen. How are you going to handle that case? Okay, you are in class. A second cycle class, I suppose. Yes. From what you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And we know that our target is instead supposed to be the junior classes because they are still tender. They don't know actually what they are looking for. So if mm -hmm. it is in a high school or a science class, and for example, not even a science class, any class in high school, and the students are there because they know what they want and they are planning to even take some certificate examination. And instead of following up their lessons, they tend to maybe look down on the teachers. I think that teachers should come together, which is what we talk of a community of practice. Like we are together here in a forum of teachers, right? Yes. Uh, Yes, so we are getting. Yes, we are together here as a, a group of teachers who have formed a community, what we call a community of practice. The teachers, all those, the teachers teaching that class can come together when you're already in a community of practice and to, you will see how you can handle that student. When he knows that you people are together, he will never do that again because he or she knows that if he or she does this to A, B, will be a problem. And at the end, uh, he or she will not have any subject to offer again. So I think, uh, in my own opinion, the way that question can be solved is bringing yourself together as a community of teachers. OK, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Uh, OK, so my question is going the same direction as my Madam Pamela's own, but yeah. not in high school, especially that's uh, the first cycle like, from five students, for example. Yeah. When uh, I take my case, since I teach for five seconds, now when the teacher ends in class, the students know that from their, they say the, the program, the, the GC program that they are supposed to cover, they are still okay. far behind. And then, uh, uh, the inspector of uh, biology insisted that we need to finish uh, the form four work things they did not finish. I'm taking the case of biology. Yes. Since they did not finish uh, their program in form four. So now he said we should look for means to finish that program. Either we make notes and then we give to students or we just go to class, we give them notes and then they read it. When they have any questions, they bring to the teacher so that the teacher should answer. Now, when you do it to, uh, to the students, I told them what the inspector said and then what we are supposed to do. I even get them group work exposes. But in those group work now, I find students that are not participating. When they bring the work in class, they will just come and claim that no, they were in the group and then they participated. Whereas they did not do anything or it's only one person who did the work and then others could just come. And when the teacher is in class, they will be making noise, complaining, everything. So I really don't know how to manage that type of class. Okay, and your own case is even here with us, right? So please, uh, please, Maranana, if we are, uh, you should still unmute yourself. Your own situation is here, right? Yes, sir. 
Yes, here in form five. So which means that when there is a, a situation like that, you can discuss with uh, your colleagues. And when you discuss with colleagues, generally we are going to find out what the problem is. Because sometimes we teachers, we can make a mistake. And if it is a, us, the teacher making a mistake, we are going to see how we can correct it. But if the problem is the students who have done or who don't who just don't want to or want to look down on some of of the teachers we teachers together will handle them and once they see that we are together they will always sit up just the same way i said with uh madam pamela all students once they know that teachers are together and that if you have a problem with this teacher that other teacher will caution you the class will be better managed Are we okay, together? so thank you. Yes, yes but uh, yes, avoid sir. giving notes for them to copy when you are not in class. No, sir, I'm giving them notes when I am there. Okay. But okay. I ask them since the no time, I just give them the notes. Now, uh, I just need questions now to be, let's say, uh, answering them and then okay. explain them. Okay, because, because that's assign... not the work. Good, because assignments are different from copying notes, right? And exposés are even good. It will help them to learn better. It will even help them to be able to learn on their own, yes, which is really something, which is an innovation too. But try to put them in class to work in groups because we have said as an innovation, they will be happy when they are always working in group. But from what you have said, when you give them exposés, they are doing group work. And what do you ensure that all of them participate in the group work? You can identify somebody who has not been working. You give that group and then ask that person to be the leader of that group. That way you will have given that person work. And tomorrow, since the person know that he, has, he or she has had a responsibility, if the person doesn't do it, the group work will not be seen. That person certainly will change and then start doing something. So I don't know. Okay. Okay. Thank God. Yes, uh, Madam Pamela. Yes. Okay. Before we end the session, let me stop recording before we look at this aspect because the recording will be shared in the room, right? Are we together? Yes, I will stop recording. Yes, sir. Yes, let me stop recording before I share this little discussion.